Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, what I usually do at the end of my day, I started doing this in some of our memberships. I showed them a few videos that I do, things that I do at the end of the day. So I've been filming today, dirty hands. I've been filming today, you know, with this palette, some spring colors, doing some of the other videos and stuff like that that you'll see on the channel. Um, and I, at the end of the day, I like to do this. I take a board, this is one that's not even perfect, and I practice, and I, I use up my palette colors and stuff, and these have been out here all day, so uh, I'll probably need to uh, get out a little bit more white here, because I used up with the, that spring painting, I used up a lot of white, so I'll put out a little bit more white. But even after the, the uh, two paintings that I did today with this palette, you can see there's a lot of paint left, so I start using it up. You can save it. And I show you different ways to save it, but I like to do this. So this is an 11 by 14 uh, board. It was base coated with uh, a light, kind of a, a greenish color made from yellow, black, and white. And now I'm just going to have some fun. So I'm going to take a larger brush. And I'll, all these colors that I use in this, this is my standard palette and stuff, uh, I list these right over into the video description down below, okay? But this is a medium beige and a little gray. They've been out here all day, so they're a little bit dried up. I haven't used them too much. And uh, let's just push some of this. Let's have some fun. And let me show you some flowers and, uh, you know, we'll maybe paint a rose and some flowers, some different ways of doing stuff. So I'll cover up some of the stuff I had on there before. And I like doing this because this is what helps keep me uh, kind of casual here. You know, with a lot of my paintings, a lot of you ask me, you know, how do you get more casual? Well, every day, every painting day and stuff, I kind of finish it up like this with just real quick fun paintings that I just toss color around and that really helps you more than anything else to be casual. So I've been starting, we're starting up a little thing on the memberships of showing you. So I thought I'd show you everyone uh, a little bit about what we do. Let's take some, um, let's do some burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna and blues. Uh, those are fun colors together, especially if they're not super mixed. Those are, are really fun colors together. See all that? That's just a beautiful color, beautiful contrast color here. And uh, we'll just drop some of that around here. It just makes, I like, you know, um, especially when I do a lot of contemporary backgrounds and stuff, this is uh, how I practice, you know, colors, what kind of colors that I might use in there. Let's just put in a bit more of a strike of blue there. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'll leave that. Sometimes I'll take that off a bit. Sometimes I'll take my paper towel. And this is where you, pra you know, you. this is where I get all of these ideas to do stuff. Is I just do this kind of stuff. And it's just, uh, it's just not only fun, but it gives you all kinds of ideas about colors and stuff like that. Let's put a strike of, those are all very warm. So let's put a strike of cool color right below that right like that maybe that's kind of pretty you got warms and cools blues and browns you know just really elegant now i do have i just from the one of the last filming i did let me reach down Ugh. harder to reach down <laughs> after a day of painting uh, i do have this frame and i thought oh you know this if it works it'll go in this frame but see those are beautiful colors you put that into that frame just like that you know very contemporary look and then we'll come in and you know paint some roses or something or flowers just maybe even just a simple one or two flower on there is all it really needs you know sometimes i'll I'll look and, and uh, you know, maybe I'll soften out some of that till it comes to the edges or something like that. If I feel I got too much color, now maybe I'm going to put a rose, let's put a rose like right in here. Sometimes if I feel like I got too much color, I'll just take a uh, my paper towel here and back a bit of it out from that area that I might want to do that. Let's put that rose in. And this helps you kind of, when you're seeing it, this kind of helps you visualize maybe the size that you want to do and that's really nice i think that's a good size i like that blue over there i think maybe i want to bring that blue violet up over here just a touch of that right up over there softer just through that just makes a nice 
just an interesting background. And it seems like the older I get, the more I like this stuff. Or my daughter, my younger daughter, who paints a lot of this type of contemporary impressionism. Um, and she is just so beautiful at it. Um, she's wearing off on me, so we'll see. All right, so let's take some of that cool color. So the, one of the things that run into my mind always is kind of harmonize, harmonize the flower to the background. So let's take some of that quinacridone. We'll harmonize this cool parts of the flower right out there like that. Let's take, we haven't had any yellow, some nice warm yellows right out here. We'll try them here. We'll work some warmth. So a lot of times, you know, when I first started out painting, I would paint, I was a light to dark painter, like most are. We would study value and stuff. And then now I'm more of a warm to cool painter. I work for warms and cools, looking at warms and cools. And so I like that much better. Let's put a bit of dark right in here. We'll work that out like that. That works nice. Maybe, uh, you know, like those of you that study roses, 30 days of roses, set that bowl in there. Set that in there. Now I'm going to paint this really fast. So let's take some of this blue, blues and the, and the violet. It's really kind of pretty. Some sapphire here. Let's maybe make a, a few little blossoms. Touches of blossoms. I love some of those colors right out there. So we'll put some of it just impressionistically grab some of this color. So, you know, there'll be blossoms, but they don't really look too much like blossoms to begin with because I'm moving color. That's what I'm trying to do is just move some of this color through here like this. Okay, let's think. I always like to see that stem and that stem line, so I have that power coming in there. So one of the things I add pretty quick is some kind of stem line to it. Movement. I think about color and movement. That's what I'm thinking about more than anything else. There's a little bit of, there's some leaves. <laughs> yeah, beautiful leaves. <laughs> You gotta have fun. This is what this is how you grow. So let's take some of that color, some of those greens, some of that burnt sienna. Let's drop it over here where I had some of these dirty spring colors. We'll start to lighten these up. Let's warm that with some yellow. Nice grays here. We'll start building, you know, some of the color. And let's take some powerful, let's make this more stroke, some powerful stroke colors there. Boom, there's a front of that rose petal. Let's tone the color down a bit so it's not quite so light. We'll pull some color in there. Let's work just a bit of that color towards the back, maybe coming into the rose. I'll lift the pressure. Smaller circles as I get towards that cool center there so I don't disrupt that cool center too much. Then I can slide over to the edge of the brush here, pick up a bit of the edge and I can draw some petals if I want to, uh, some more specific just picking up an edge of that color I can pick up some more but you know it's not the color that I use here and the big thing to remember is the color that I'm using here is not as light as what you see on the front of that rose let's put in some soft back petals here here back like that just softness back there and uh, maybe close off the edge of this rose here like that so you got to think about the, you know the rose is kind of a ball here so we'll close that off rounding up that ball here and let's round up this is a little open medium maybe I'm going to add a little open medium which adds a, a translucent a transparency to the painting just because it thins it out a bit but it also keeps it really thick and nice too which is what I don't want right now Okay, so see that looks kind of like the front of the rose. Let's um, work this just a bit softer here, light but softer. So a little open medium into this. We'll work some petals out here. Here, you know, I like the roughness of the painting out through here, so maybe I'll leave these outer petals here looking just a bit rough and even work in some of that green right down here. See, green is a beautiful color. And if I have it there in with, um, you know, in 
that particular area there, I'll work it in and make it, because that makes your petals look transparent, translucent here. So I'll just work that color in a bit. Let's go a little bit heavier color out here. If this is the light source, we'll draw a petal in here. But basically, as I come into the flower, I start to lighten up my values. So some of you write me and some of you on the, on the um, MeWe group and stuff, you write me and me telling me your flowers get a little flat because you're using too much white too far out. As we get, we get lighter and smaller as we come in. So that's what we got to do. Matter of fact, let me put a light, like a light petal, like right up here, like this, here. Boom, just right out there like that. We'll push it in and out of that bowl a bit there so you get some of that nice movement there. Now that's a little straight across the front, but I wanted to show you that. <laughs> so we'll just pull some in this way as well. Just a few little petal turns in like that. Gives a different look to it. We'll uh, maybe lighten up. So here as I come more towards the center, even one down from it there, I'll uh, lighten up so it's lighter than that first strike that I put on there. And you saw when I first did that first strike, everyone was going, <gasps> maybe that's a little too light, but no, uh -uh. it's by the time I start to work some of these other colors out here, it's not too light. And let's just put on a, a bit of, just a bit of movement like this. Just, I just strike it a couple of times and I'll just round that bowl movement just like that. That's what makes the rose so pretty is you got to keep that rounding movement to it here so let's just drop a little bit there maybe just a couple more hits of a highlight I could have some more yellow in there and stuff which would be maybe kind of pretty but that's kind of a pretty rose now I could just chisel this edge right here and make like a a little petal right there you know there's just there's just a thousand things that you can do that's a little bent so just blur that out a bit. Maybe a little bit of brown and green here. Burnt sienna green right out here on this side just to fill that, get that nice tone kind of color. Now, I could come out here and put a little bit of light, but you know, I kind of like the way that's looking. Let's take a bit of that burnt sienna, just that bowl color. And you know, you think about that bowl just kind of coming around and tracking around in there. And that makes a real pretty little flower. Let's take a bit of that right down in here. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll back, like I had that, that quinacridone out earlier. So I'll come back in and widen out or, or work through, you know, a particular part of the rose with just a little bit of that quinacridone. And that just gets that, it picks up that cool color that's coming right through there. So I look at some of the stuff I do. Now there's certain things I don't like about this rose in that that's a real flat area right there. And now that I showed you, I should go fix that. So we'll go do that. And all I have to do is go back down to a lower, let's even put a little beige in there, a lower value and push it out just a little bit. I don't want to use a light value, a lower value. And we'll even let some of that green go in there. We'll push this out just a bit like that, okay? That looks pretty good that way. Now, let's go back some of the blues that we have here. Some of the pretty blues, blue-violets here. Let's push in some of those colors right in here like that. Like these are just little blossom flowers here. Just little touches here. Those would be kind of pretty here and uh, sometimes so I'll take a if, if I get it a little heavy out there like this I'll take a just a bit of water and just pull through that and basically soften out that little group right like that let it blur out because we want these kind of soft here you know we'll want a few of the flowers in there but we want it kind of soft and let's take a little pine green and some burnt sienna and we'll push in a few more ideas of some leaves. We'll put some lighter leaves in here too but I just love pine green burnt sienna and look how much paint I'm using. Hardly anything. So I have enough here when you go put this out to do this 20 more times you know 
And like I told you in some of the other videos, I get comments sometimes where it's like, oh, you waste a lot of paint. No, I don't. You know, it's I use the paint like this really fast and I and I use a little bit of paint. And like I said earlier in the, one of the videos that of this palette that I use there, I have about 50 cents worth of paint out. And I'm going to get a good dozen paintings out of it. Easy. You know, and so, no, you don't waste paint. A good quality paint like this goes a long ways. Let's uh, put in a few more little ideas of blossoms here. So what I do is I imagine like a little five petal type blossom here and I'm not going to I'm not going to paint all the petals. I'm just going to uh imagine them. Let's add some more blue and violet right through here. So these are a little different, not quite as light. Here, some other little colors coming out of here. Very very impressionistic. Now I also like to do this if I use those colors. I always like to push, push that color into the rose somewhere so you get a nice harmony between those colors. Let's lighten up a bit here and maybe lighten the blossom or two right here. Just the idea of it. A little model your colors which means don't over mix them. Don't mix them too much. Just kind of tap them together so you get some different colors. See, and that's what makes all of these a little impressionistic. You don't need very much to say blossoms, see? That's just little impressionistic blossoms here. Yeah, that's just kind of pretty there. But we should lighten and maybe even brown or gray up some here um, just because those are some of the colors in our rows. And that'll give us harmony. But I imagine just little petals, and I'm not painting the whole thing just impressions of these little petals. Darken it down a little bit, change it just a bit. See, just an impression of those little petals as they got as they come in here. Let's just push that back a bit. That's pretty and you can take even little colors like this and just, you know, get very impressionistic and run some of those colors out and I'll do like this and take those out like that and blur those out that just becomes a uh, you know part of the impressionism of it you know and maybe you know after looking at this this rose like this again maybe I do want to have a bit more light to it so I'll pick up some light here let's lighten up this edge of this petal see that gives it more contrast more but you got to be careful because you could flatten it here now too if you get too much light just in one area you could start to flatten your rows here so we'll approach it a little careful we still have room to go lighter and I will step off the side here get some clean light that's lighter yet and let's pull that in and uh, so it lightens up this rose, carries it a bit more here. There we go. Push that bowl right in there. Keep that bowl. That, that could be a little softer. So maybe even a little pinky color there on the bowl there. There we go. So I'm always looking to the shape of that rose and the bowl and everything we have going on here. There we go, like that, that's kind of neat. Let's put an edge maybe on this one. You gotta be careful, not too light, cause you'll flatten the rows, so. But we're just, I always, I'm a big advocate of revisiting your rows, going back, let's take a little bit of violets and, you know, going back and adding a bit and bringing your rows up. That's, uh, I like to do that kind of stuff. Now, we can give the impression of maybe uh, something else down over here. Maybe another rose. Kind of round your, your strokes a bit here. Blur that off. This is all dry, so I'm just blurring it all off here. And uh, so maybe there's another one there. I don't want to fill this up too much. I want to keep this just a very open and loose composition, but you know, something about having maybe another one, just the idea of one right back down here is kind of pretty. 
and a little less, more browns, softer colors here. Just sketchy, sketchy of the roast. This don't do very much here. Don't do very much at all. Matter of fact, we'll bring up maybe the edge. So I'm always looking at the edge. So if this is very, very soft, well, this one has almost the same softness to that edge. So I'm going to bring this edge actually of these petals up a bit more, which will help advance that rose in front of this one. I can put a small little edge maybe right in here before this rose starts to soften out here. But see, I just want to be very sketchy. This rose is just basically almost not there. I want the viewer up here. So that's got some pretty colors in it. We're what, 20, 20 minutes? <laughs> you know, doesn't, you know, and you look at that into that. See, that's, that's kind of pretty. That's got a, a pretty good and an elegant kind of look to it. It could use some, I like the darks of this frame, so it could use a little bit more you know, darks here and there if you want to get that, you know, nice contrast. And everything is stopping a little short of the frame. This is one thing I always tell my students. I'm a very logical, left brain, analytical painter, but one of the things I'll do is line everything up and keep it. So I'll keep a space around, the same space all the way around a frame like that if I'm not careful. So I always tell them, you know, one of the things I look for, and I just looked for it and found it, I'm going to take a little blue and burnt sienna here is, you know, I'll take some of this right off, completely off to the edge. And uh, so one side is a little different than the rest. So it's not completely the same. And I'm loving that burnt sienna. Maybe even a little darker with a little bit of the thalo will make it quite a bit darker here. More rich looking. Let's put some of that right into, into these, right in there like that. And you can either wipe it down with your uh, with your paper towel, you know, to take some of that off of your thing, or you do like this. I'll use this is a one inch brush, and I'll just blur it back into the back part of the flower here, and this right into those blues right there. Just work those in, pull that through a bit there, and uh, let's soften that bit right there. That looks pretty nice, and if I want to, I'll bring those blues. Find my absolutely perfect brush here. This is, I've been painting this all with a number eight uh, fusion flat. We'll find those blues and violets and just set some of those. Maybe even a little violet, tiny bit of the thalo, which darkens it down, see? Just set a bit of those colors right out into that. See, this is where it gets really pretty, just, you know, not quite that dark. <laughs> Just that that tells me now you, you got a, a little more control than that, Dave. So we could just take that though and just soften that in. That's kind of pretty there like that. Now you can add extenders and stuff like that to give you more working time, you know, to soften some of that. Um I'm not going to worry about that too much because everything, when I put this color on pretty heavy, it stays wet for, boy, I like that heavier color there. Maybe just a touch of that right back in there. Um, it stays wet for quite a long time, the heavier color here like this. But you know, I'm painting pretty darn fast. Some of you are going, yes, Dave, you're painting really fast. But this is how I like to paint. This is how I finish up my days, and this is where I get uh, paintings that more people like is because I work with a certain speed, and it gets really, really casual, and they just go, oh, I really like that. If I slow down and start thinking about it too much, I they they become stiff, you know? So, yeah, sometimes I've got to go a little bit quicker, you know, on onto the painting. Let's put just some ideas of little leaves and stuff, and um, very casual. Little burnt sienna green here. We'll work some of those colors. I like the the uh, movements of those there. And if I like that line's a little bit wide, so I'm just going to take it out a bit and maybe even reset it with a light, like a lighter green here. Which is what I'll do is 
so I'll push the light the stem here a little bit of lightness into the stem here like that and we'll get a lighter little green in through some of this I'm a big advocate of change your green colors around change those greens don't always paint with the same color change those around me and, and a little bit of blue with that makes a pretty makes a pretty green as well here a little bit of sapphire blue we'll let some of that brown pick up into that let some of that just fade away like that and uh yeah and if i want to uh I'll bring this rose back just a bit and if you want to bring that rose up even more you can add a little dark center the center is what really brings it back you know, I could take some of that light beige, maybe a bit of yellow, and just tap a few of these as little flower centers. Impressionistic there. A little bit of that. That's pretty good. Let's take this softer, lighter green and just hit that a bit there. Even pine green by itself is pretty in this particular painting. It's a nice, deeper, rich green now. Right in there with some of that. Let's blur some of that. That's pretty good. Uh, that's the impressionism that I just love. I love that impressionism. You put those edges out like that. And, you know, it's... You know, formally, it's like if you were going to be like, okay, what is true impressionism to the 19th century? No, it's more what we call representational. I'm painting more of something that is representing something, you know. But I like to call it pure impressionism because, you know, what I do is is uh, I'm not really thinking about rows as much as I'm thinking about shape and color, you know. And uh, yeah, I just happened to be painting a floral. But now you see that that rose pops off of that. Let me grab that frame one more time here. Drop that in. There's a nice little painting just boom, done in 27 minutes. You know, and this is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, I like to do at the, at the end of my painting day. And I get a lot of these things. And you know, I sell them, and we put them up in our gallery, our online gallery. And if you ever want to go over there and see whenever they come up, it's Jansen Art, um, JansenArtGallery.com, JansenArtGallery.com. And you can go see some of the stuff, and we put some of these up, stuff every once in a while, um, for sale on, on there. And, uh, you know, so if you want to have yourself a David at the last of the day, my dogs now have joined me, at the... Uh, Last of the day, fun painting like this, you can go over there and check that. Or if you're interested in any of those, just drop us a note and uh, we can send you some photos of some of them that are available, okay? They're really a lot of fun, but these were, these are what help you lighten up and casual up. And look at this, I still have enough paint here to do several more. I squirted out all that white and I only used maybe 20% of it. So that's five more paintings. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun. Those of you that are in our memberships, I'll put a nice study for you, for you so you can use this one to get ideas. If you, I get a lot of questions all the time for people as they can I paint along with you on YouTube and sell the paintings. Like I've said in the last couple of videos, yes you can. We allow you to paint and sell our you know, what we're doing here, use it for good inspiration, even copy it, that's okay. You know, we've been very blessed by this industry, and we'd like to pass that on. All we ask is that if you are going to sell it on the back of the design, just put in there, inspired by, you know, David Jansen Original. That helps us with our copyrights and stuff like that, and some of the rules and stuff, especially as it goes out into other countries. That's all we ask, okay? But otherwise, sell it have some fun, make some money, and, uh, or, you know, give it to those special relatives, okay? All right, guys. And, uh, members, I'll put this in for you, and have some fun with it, okay? I'll put that photo in, and have some fun with it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget, like the video, share the video as much as possible, watch them as much as possible, because YouTube goes by how many uh, how many minutes you watch a video so you help us out when you watch the video okay thanks a lot guys i'll see you in the next one